Dinosaurs get their names because paleontologists give them their names. So uh, we name dinosaurs all the time. And uh, you know, there's just different conventions. People have different styles. Some of these complex dinosaur names we know just roll off the tongue of little kids. But how, how did they get those names? There's a nomenclature, and there's, there are rules to that nomenclature. That require every dinosaur, in fact, every organism name, to have two separate names. The first is the genus name, and it's always capitalized, like Tyrannosaurus. Rex is the species name that follows. In other words, there's a particular species of Tyrannosaurus called Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, these names kind of came from Latin or Greek words. Tyrannosaurus means terrible lizard. And they can either describe some anatomical characteristic of the dinosaur. Like Triceratops, it's named after the three horns on top of its head. Or they can be names that honor someone, maybe the person who collected a lot of dinosaurs. Sometimes dinosaurs are named after where they're found, like Edmontosaurus is a good example. I mean, it's from near Edmonton in Canada. Traditionally, in the old days, almost every dinosaur ended in saurus. So we have, you know, Edmontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus. That's sort of changed a little bit. I mean, one of the th things that we regularly do now is that we name dinosaurs that are found in China have the, the, uh, uh, the suffix long, L-O-N-G. So like Guanlong, Kung Long, because Long means dragon in Mandarin. And this is kind of how these dinosaurs get their names. They're not simply meaningless, but they're either describing some aspect of the animal, where it was found, or someone that was important in its discovery. And we have a lot of these examples in the dinosaur halls here at AMNH. 